Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, having to update our calendar for the seventh month in the year 2022 because today is not Yon Teruah. That's right, today is not the feast of the memorial of blowing of trumpets. The new moon was not sighted last night. We got reports from Africa all throughout the United States and nobody reported the moon. Now, the way I do it, somebody asked me by way of comment, how do I determine the new moon? Well, first of all, because I live in Alabama and there's so many people to the east, I wait on reports coming out of Africa and the Middle East and anybody over there who bothers to chime in to our channel. Those guys always get the heads up before we do. So by the time sun sets over here, we already have an idea of whether the moon will be seen or not. But then we get reports from Tennessee. We get reports from other parts of the East Coast. And here in Alabama, by the time we get to see it, it's usually only secondary confirmation. And then we start to get reports from the West. They'll chime in from California, letting us know what they saw. And like last night, nobody reported a sighting of the new moon whatsoever. Nobody we had almost 50 people to chime in on our channel and none of them reported seeing the moon. So then I come over to websites like truthofyahweh.com and look to see if anybody reported seeing the moon last night. And the thing about it, you see uh, report after report, there's so many people chimed in saying that they didn't see any moon whatsoever over on truthofyahweh.com. This is an important website because it gives people from around the world the chance to chime in. But as you can see, none of them actually saw anything except for over there in Hawaii. Now, first of all, Hawaii is way, way west. So if they are the first to actually see the sighting of the new moon, it would actually, to me, seem like it would indicate that we will actually start the month on the following day, being that they are so west. But what I want to point out over on this website, because there are some who have reported in about this Hawaii sighting, is that this is actually just one report. It says there that it was cited by two people, but you have to understand that those two people really can only count as one. So in other words, there was one sighting way west in Hawaii, but you actually need two in order for confirmation. And as we can see, there's one report of a sighting. And then there was about 50 saying that they had saying that they had no sighting whatsoever. So in other words, out of Africa, Jerusalem, the Internet, my own eyes and everybody, there was only one sighting. And that was over in Hawaii. And that is not actually good enough to declare the new moon. Therefore, we'll go out this evening to verify that there is a sighting. And that brings me to my other point. This is how our sacred calendar works. You know, so many people ask me for a printout of the calendar and I tell them like, I really can't. I can't give you a calendar that you can put on your wall and go by because we do not know when we will have a sighting of the moon. In our last new moon prediction report, I kept telling you if we see the sighting, if we see the sighting on September the 26th, then this is the way the calendar looks. But since we did not see a sighting on September the 26th, then that calendar is null and void. And you can imagine if somebody had that calendar and if I gave it to them and they were using it there in their home, how upset they would be with me that their days are off. They'd probably ball the whole thing up and throw it away because it would be worthless. The only way that we can accurately go by the sacred calendar is with the visible confirmation of the moon. Like we see over in the book of Enoch in his chapter called the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. You see there in chapter 72 verse five that it says at the time it appears and becomes to you the beginning of the month. This is talking about the moon. This whole chapter here is about the moon. And so what it's telling us here is at the time it appears uh, when we see the sliver of the moon is the beginning of the month. That's why there's so many people around the world who will be there at sunset this evening looking to see the moon to make sure that it appears before they actually start blowing the trumpets to let everybody know. 
that a new month has started. And you say, well, why is that so important? Especially this month is because of these feast days that we have coming up, like the Day of Atonement, which if we see the sighting of the moon this evening, we probably will. But again, we have to wait till this evening to see it. But if we see the sighting of the moon this evening, September the 27th, then the Day of Atonement will start the evening of October the 6th and will end the evening of October the 7th. And then we will have the Feast of Tabernacles to start on the evening of October the 11th, going all the way through to the end of October the 19th or October the 20th, which was the day that they all will return back to their houses, at least those that are dwelling in booths in foreign places and stuff like that. They won't actually leave on the Sabbath day, which will fall on Wednesday, October the 19th. You can't expect them to pack up their tent and make that long trek home. So usually they'll leave on the next day, which will be October the 20th. And that should be noted too, is that the Sabbath days, if we see the sighting on September the 27th, the Sabbath days will fall on Wednesdays for the next four weeks until we see another sighting of the new moon there in late October. But anyway, we're talking about these feast days. And like I say, you can see here, the sighting of the new moon on 27th makes the 28th the first day of the month in Rosh Hashanah, the memorial blowing of trumpets. It's also the day of remembrance. And we'll talk about that here in a second, why it's so important. But you see here that that puts the Day of Atonement there on October the 6th and October the 7th. But when you come back and look at Google and type in when is Jean Kippur for 2022, it tells you October the 4th and October the 5th. And the reason why is because they started Rosh Hashanah back there on September the 25th. And this is why we're doing this video, such rushed video right now to make sure you guys get this information is because if you're going by this Jewish calendar, if you're going by Google or the calendar on your wall that's telling you the dates of these feasts, they're actually going to have you off by many days this time. They'll be ending the memorial of blowing of trumpets this evening while we'll be out there sighting the new moon. And then when it comes to Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, they'll start on October the 4th and end on the 5th, which we see here, they're actually going to be three whole days too early. They're going to miss the Day of Atonement by three whole days this year. And if you're wondering how it is that their calendar gets them off like this, it's kind of usually off by a day. It's because of how the Jewish calendar is calculated. Now, it should be noted that this is a Jewish calendar. It's not a Jew calendar. It's a Jewish calendar, meaning it is like the Jew calendar. It's like a sacred calendar, but it's not actually the sacred calendar. And the reason why is because they don't go by the observation of the moon. They're, they're not standing out there trying to see the moon like we are. They go by what they call the Matonic cycle. This was created by Hillel too many, many years ago that actually gives them the dates of the new moon based on a 19 year cycle in which the sun and the moon's position repeat itself every 19 years. In other words, if you have a new moon today on October the 27th in the year 2022, well, if you go 19 years out, you can expect to see another new moon that would fall on September the 27th. And so what they're really doing is going, and so this is how they determine their years. It's basically a calculation created by a gentleman way back there in the time of Constantine. And the problem with that is he created this calendar on the persecution before Hillel II and before Constantine, they were actually viewing the moon just like we do today. They would send the Levites and the priests and whoever else was interested out there to lay eyes on the moon and report back that they had actually seen it before the month started. Well, Constantine had a problem with that because it was allowing the Jews or the Hebrews of the time to keep the Feast of Passover, which of course, keeping any of the feast days gives our people power. And by putting it on this Matonic cycle, it created errors in the system. And so some years they would get Passover correctly, but other years they would get it wrong. And we can't have feast days on any day and they don't count. 
you, you have to have the Passover on that particular day. The Feast of Unleavened Bread has to fall on that particular day. Atonement Day has to fall on the very precise day. You can't just do it anytime you want. But Constantine was actually satisfied with this work by Hillel too, because not only would it cause them to miss feast days every so often, in other words, they will keep the feast day correctly in one year and then miss it all together in the next year. But Hillel too also took away the Sabbath day and determined that the Sabbath day will fall on Saturdays. This is where they get the Saturday Sabbath from altogether. It actually comes from this Hillel too and Constantine's work as they decided that they couldn't reckon the real Sabbath day. Of course, the way to determine the real Sabbath day is by the new moon. The new moon is the first day of the month and of the first day of the week. And then you just calculate your Sabbath days from there. Well, Hillel too decided that they didn't know how to reckon the Sabbath day anymore. And so he determined that it was Saturday based on the planetary week. And that of course appeased Constantine knowing that the Hebrews and the followers of Christ would no longer be keeping the Sabbath day on the correct day, he'd allowed them to go so, and he actually ended the persecution. And to this day, the Jewish community goes by the product of those two gentlemen. That's why this website over here um, at worldslastchance.com says is, is titled Constantine One and Hillel Two two men who deceived the whole world that they messed the whole world up got us celebrating the sabbath day on the wrong day and the feast days on the wrong day just like they'll be celebrating the feast days on the wrong day in the year 2022 they're they're going to miss all of them these are people who would otherwise never consider missing a feast day but because they're looking at the jewish calendar they're going to be off by at least three days on these feasts of the lord and I know what you're thinking. Your favorite YouTube channel is celebrating their feast days now. But now a good opportunity to understand if the guy you are following is a true follower of Christ. Because the true followers of Christ, they choose truth over anything. And we're all fallible. We all make mistakes. And we have to, when we realize that we're making mistakes, we have to come in and we have to correct. So once he sees this, and I know he will. He will see this. He'll get word from you guys and he'll have to come over and he'll have to, he'll have to uh, acknowledge this. But will he tell you, will he come back and tell you that he was wrong? Just like I'm doing in this video where I'm having to come and tell you that, you know, the calendar had, has to change, has to be updated. Is he going to update his calendar for his followers and tell them the correct day of atonement day or is his pride going to kick in and he's going to stick to what he's told them already, not suffering the embarrassment of having to come in and do a correction. This is this is the opportunity for you to see who it is that you following. Are you following a person who loves truth or are you following a person who loves pride? This, this will be a good chance to see when you go over there and tell him that the new moon was not sighted on the 26th and that the day of atonement is not going to be on the day that he had told you that it was going to be. But anyway, back to this Matonic cycle that Hillel II created. Now, it is actually a legitimate way of telling time. The, the months actually do repeat themselves over the course of 19 years. So I myself created a table here. And you say, well, coach, why is your table different than Hillel II's? Well, first of all, I'm not telling you the date of the new moon. As we can see, this is a good example that we cannot determine when that moon is going to show when she's going to show her face and show her sliver we cannot tell based on the calculation it has to be observation so the difference between this calendar and the one you saw created by Hillel too is I don't tell you the new moon or the sighting of the new moon I only tell you the zero percent moon which can be calculated that actually can be calculated based on mathematics that's when the moon will be zero percent illuminated you won't be able to see anything the calendars on your wall use this date too when you look on your, the Gregorian calendar that tells you the new moon is actually telling you the zero percent illuminated moon again because you can calculate it by mathematics they can actually predict that many many years out 
but it's the sighting of the new moon that can't be predicted. So instead of making a table of a date that can't be predicted, I made a table of the dates that can be predicted. And then from there, we use that information to know when to go out and start looking for the moon. For instance, here, we there was a 0% moon on September the 25th at 1600 hours or 4 p.m. Well, from there, we know that on the 26th, we'll go out there and we'll start looking for the moon. And then since we didn't see it yesterday, then we'll go out there and we'll start looking for it again today. And that's the way this table works. It only gives you the 0% moon, letting you know when you should actually start looking. It's, it, you can't go by these dates. You have to have the verification. But all this does is let you know when it is that you'll start looking. For instance, next month on October the 25th at 0 05 in the morning or 5 a.m., that's when the moon will be 0%. That's a calculated number. And then after then, you'll start looking for the new moon at that evening, the evening of the 26th. And if you don't see it, then you'll go out on the evening of the 27th until you actually see it. And then you will actually blow the trumpets and let everybody know that a new month started. My point is, is that the calendars don't work. All this is is just a guide. It's not really a calendar. It's just a hint as to when the new month will actually start. You have to have the visible confirmation. So when people ask me, you know, to, to sell them a calendar or to give them a calendar, I can't really do it because it has to go month by month. Even if this even this calendar here is tentative, we still have about seven or eight hours before the sun goes down and we're able to see the new moon. And if it does not appear, then I'll have to update this one again. This monthly calendar can only be created after the moon has been sighted. So there's no way to give you a paper printout of the sacred calendar. It doesn't work on paper. But how it does work is in the form of a clock. Our father allowed me to um, create this clock. I should say invent this clock that actually tracks this celestial cycle is based on the timing of the moon. All clocks are the hour hand on your clock is based on the lunar cycle. The only problem is, is they took one hand away. And so you don't actually see the moon hand on the clock. It's like our clocks is missing a hand. Well, praise our father in heaven. He has allowed us over on this channel to actually put that hand back on the clock. Now, what you're seeing here is the one that we have been selling through our channel, coachingthefight.shop. Um, you can uh, see this particular calendar today. And the way it works is this hand right here is your hour hand. That's the normal hand that you see on your clock. But these other two hands has actually been slowed down. We put two clocks together to multiply the time. And so you have this one, which used to be the second hand, is now the hour hand. And then what used to be the minute hand is now the month hand. This hand right here actually determines the month for us when it reaches on this particular version of the clock and I plan on updating it but on this particular version when this hand points straight up and down you know that you are about to get a new moon and you should start going out to verify that you are getting a new moon and then the hour hand or what used to be the hour hand is actually tracking the whole year it takes a whole year for this hand right here to go around the clock and we have to give all praises to our father in heaven because our clocks work like this at all. But this is how they work. The, even the clock on your wall does the same thing. It's just missing these other two hands. If you want a second hand and a minute hand and an hour hand, well, you need a way to add two more hands to that clock. And that will be the lunar hand or the moon hand. And then you will have the star hand or the gate hand. But like I said, I'm planning on updating this. But before I get into that, let me just point out something about this particular clock and how it stays so accurate. The reason why is because of the days of remembrance, just like what we have coming up here, which will probably be September the 28th will be the day of remembrance. Well, on that day, we actually have to add a day to our calendar. We have to do that every year, whether you're using a clock calendar or whether whatever, every three months. There's an additional day added to the calendar. We've known that for years, 
Anybody who's been following the sacred calendar knows about the additional day. That's why there are 364 days opposed to 360 days is because of that extra day there. Well, you know, this is a very scientific channel over here, too. And we ran a lot of experiments and numbers and turns out the way this works is every day of remembrance. We have to push this clock ahead by a day and a half, actually. There's no decimal points in the Bible except really over in Enoch 2. The second book of Enoch or the secrets of Enoch goes into detail, more detail about how the sun works on the celestial calendar. And we spent a lot of time understanding this, you know, because when we saw how that clock was working and how it was lining up just perfectly and we know that the scripture is always just perfect we knew that these had to match and what we find out is what Enoch was talking about over here is how we actually end up adding days to the celestial clock so in other words when we see the sighting of the new moon this evening what we'll have to do is we'll have to push this hour hand forward three revolutions and this is your biblical reference for that when he says over here, each one of these portals or these gates has 61 and a quarter stadia in it. And so what we end up doing is pushing the clock. So as a reference for how we are allowed to do that and why it works. And that should be important. You know, you have the scripture on paper in front of you and then you have our understanding of how it works. And then you have a clock over there. And it's amazing to see how it actually works out perfectly when we do what it says here. And we update our calendar every three months. This is how we keep this clock accurate. And it does stay pretty accurate as long as you update it every three months. Now, this one over here, I'm showing you this one. This is actually the prototype. This is the one we actually created first. This was the, the one we made from scratch, if you know what I mean. And I haven't updated it. We actually got it done on February the 22nd at 10.22 p.m. Think about those numbers for a second. February 22nd at 10.22 p.m., we got this calibrated and set and we haven't touched it since but as you can see here how it's a little bit off compared to this one this one seems that the moon hand is pointing towards the 11 while this one over here seems to be pointed towards 11 30 well that is that day and a half that we're talking about this one was updated last quarter in the day of remembrance but this one hasn't been updated at all i don't want to touch it um I actually want to keep it set. You see, it's still on standard time instead of daylight savings time. I actually want to keep it, you know, the way it was that we created it back there in February. So I'm intentionally not updating it. But when we do get the new moon this evening, I will be pushing this one so that it lines up perfectly at 6 p.m. This hand right here will be down here pointing to the 6 p.m., letting us know that it's 6 p.m. And then we'll start rotating it forward until this hand right here lines perfectly up with the new moon date. And then for three months, it'll stay accurate. But then after that, we'll have to push it forward again. So I say all of that to say, you know, if you guys want a, a, a calendar, I'm sorry I can't sell you a calendar like this because it's going to have errors in it and, you know, I, if it's right there on paper, I mean, you're going to have to whip your pencil out and erase stuff and all of that. But over here, in order to keep this calendar accurate, all you have to do is remember the day of remembrance and push your calendar ahead a day just like it tells us to do. And it will stay accurate for the end of time. And I plan on updating this. Um, now that I mentioned at the end of time, I plan on updating the faceplate on here, making it more like it was originally, where it shows you that the, the the data opposed to the months. Like this one over here shows you um, February and March and May. Well, this one over here, we're gonna when we do the update, we're gonna go more towards just a basic calendar that will work no matter what happens to the planet or what happens to the solar system. As long as the sun keeps going across the sky and the moon keeps going across the sky at the timing that they are, it will work. It's just that these other numbers that we're putting in here, like man's dates, um, uh, February and June and stuff like that, is actually going to make this calendar get off. So 
look for an update to it. We're going to um, take these, uh, we're going to simplify and reduce it down to a more simple version. Like I said, it'll look more like this. And you, you can, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and start placing orders for that. It's on backlog now, but we'll actually start making uh, clocks on this uh, newer simplified um, way. And if you have a clock already, you'll be able to order a faceplate too that you can just update it by changing out the new and putting a new face on it. So look for that again at coachingthefight.shop. But anyway, getting back to what's important and that's the day of remembrance. And just for that, let me come over and show you in the book of Jubilees in chapter six, down here in about verse 23, we start hearing about these days of remembrance. And it tells us that it's the new moon of the seventh month. It's very important. It says, and on the new moon of the first month and on the new moon of the fourth month and on the new moon of the seventh month and on the new moon of the 10th month are the days of remembrance and the days of the seasons in the four divisions of the years. These are written and ordained as a testimony forever. And so this is never supposed to go away. And this is the problem with the Jewish calendar is they don't pay attention to these days of remembrance. They've gotten the Hillel 2 calendar and they go by it. You, you can put in here almost any date you want, you know, 10 years out and they think they can tell you the exact date of it. It's because they're going by a calculation and they're not considering the days of remembrance. And let me show you why that's a problem. You see down here in verse 32 where it says, And command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days. And these will constitute a complete year. And they will not disturb its time from its days and from its feasts. For everything will fall out in them according to their testimony. And they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. So this is why those guys are celebrating the feast days on the wrong day. They've forgotten the days of remembrance guys and and this is such a big deal because you have people who are celebrating on the wrong day but it tells us here it tells us real simple if you don't remember the days of remembrance this is exactly what's going to happen that's what keeps the calendar in order is the days of remembrance this is why we have to update the clock every three months is for these days of remembrance this is why i can sell you a clock with a battery in it to help you know when the Sabbath days and the feast days are, but I can't sell you a piece of paper unless I write it out in pencil for you to erase and update it because of these dates of remembrance. This is so important because you see right there in verse 33, it says, if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandments, then they will disturb all their seasons and the years will be dislodged from this order and they will neglect their ordinances. So by not keeping up with the days of remembrance, like it says here, their seasons will be disturbed and the years will be dislodged. You see there in verse 34, it says they will. It says that all of the children of Israel will forget and will not find the paths of the years and will forget the new moons, the seasons, the Sabbaths, and they will go wrong as is all of the order of the years. This is why the Jewish community thinks we're in the year 5,780 something. We know that our Messiah is supposed to be back in the year 6,000. So if you believe the Jewish community, you believe that we have about 217 years before our Messiah returns. Do you believe we have 217 years left before our Messiah returns? Do you really think things are going to go the way they are for the next 217 years? Of course not. Well, the reason why they believe that is because they've gotten away from the day of remembrance and they're not updating their calendar as they supposed to. So just like we were told in the book of Jubilees, which they don't recognize, by the way, they have gone wrong and have lost the order of the years. They don't know what year it is. And I give our Father in Heaven credit for allowing us over on this channel to determine which year we're actually in. And you can see videos that we have on that, that we are actually closer to the year 5994, getting ready to go into the year 5995, which means that we have more like six or seven years before the return of our Messiah. 
But anyway, you see down in verse 36, it says, For there will be those who will surely make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in from year to year too soon. See, this again reminds you of the Muslim calendar. Their calendar is based on the lunar cycle alone, whereas the book of Genesis told us that we need the sun, the moon, and the stars. And we see this on our clock. Um, didn't want to heavily try to advertise this clock, but you know, we, it is, it is something that works, but you see all three elements, the sun, the moon, and the stars are represented on this clock. That's how it's able to track the celestial system. What used to be our second hand tracks the sun and tells us when our day starts. What used to be the minute hand now tracks the moon and tells us when our months start. And what used to be our hour hand actually tracks the stars and tells us when our seasons begin. When this hand is straight up and down pointing towards the 12, that's going to be about the spring equinox on this calendar. But when you're looking over at the Muslim Ramadan schedule, you see that it occurs 10 days earlier each year. It goes from April the 13th to April the 2nd. And then March the 23rd is because they're only going by the moon and their feast days are coming 10 days too early. This is why one year it'll be in April and then you go so many years down the road and they'll be doing the same thing in September. That's what Moses was saying over here in verse 36, why it says those who will surely observe the moon. And, you know, people get hung up on that saying we're not supposed to no, know you're just you're supposed to use all three elements. Like it says there in Genesis 1 and 16, he got the greater light, the lesser light, and you have the stars also. This is how his clock works. This is how we know the division of the days, the division of the seasons, and the division of the months and the years. It takes the sun, the moon, and the stars. And if you don't, you're going to end up like the Jewish community or the Muslim community, and your calendar is going to be off. But then we'll look what else it says. For this reason, the years will come upon them when they will disturb the order and make an abominable day, the day of testimony and an unclean day of feast day. And they will confound all of the days, the holy with the unclean and the unclean day with the holy. For they will go wrong as to the months and Sabbaths and feasts and jubilees. Again, guys, forgetting this day of remembrance is messing them up. Look how bad. It says the good Sabbath day is going to be off. Yeah, we talked about earlier. They do their Sabbath days on Saturday now. Or some of them do it on Sunday now. Or just some random day now. It's because they've forgotten the day of remembrance. It says they're going to forget the feast of jubilees. You know, you hear them talking all the time. They don't know when the feast of jubilees is. Is. Well, you don't know when the Feast of Jubilees is, even though we are told in this same book over there in chapter 50 of the same book, no doubt, verse 4, it tells us when the Jubilee years are. But how are you going to get to chapter 50 and have faith in the fact that it tells us when the Jubilee year is when you don't have faith in chapter 6? When it told us that we're supposed to be keeping the days of remembrance. Well, they've forgotten the days of remembrance and now they don't know when the Jubilee year is. Well, we remember when the Jubilee year is on this channel and we've proved it several times and we will continue to do so only because we did what the scripture tells us to do. And that was to remember the day of remembrance. But look at this part right here. And this is important. This is this is why it's so important that we, you know, get this information out about how these days and making sure everybody understand when these days are. You see where it says right here, they will make an abominable day, the day of testimony. So this is what they're going to be doing. If if your guy doesn't update his calendar based on the sighting of the new moon, he's going to have you keeping the day of the atonement on the wrong day. That's an abominable day. That's an unclean day. He will have you celebrating your feast days on an unclean day. And on the clean day, you'll be doing stuff like, for instance, the day of atonement when we're told plainly that you will be cut off if you miss that day. Well, they're going to miss that day simply because we're not following the calendar the way it's supposed to work. Anybody who is following those guys and what they're saying is going to miss that day altogether. There's your clean day, the day of atonement, but they're going to be celebrating it over here three days too early. 
just like the book of Jubilee said that they would. And then you look at verse 38. It says, For this reason I command and testify to thee that thou mayest testify to them. For after thy death, thy children will disturb them, so that they will not make the year 364 days only. And for this reason, they will go wrong as to the new moons and the seasons and the Sabbaths and the festivals. And they will eat all kinds of blood and all kinds of flesh. So you see the result of not doing this. And you got to understand how important these feast days are. These are what regulates us when you think about it. The feast days are what regulates us as our father's people. So once you get off and start doing them on the wrong day, well, that you lose that regulation. And like it says here, you're going to start doing all kinds of wickedness, forgetting the commandments. You're going to lose track of the calendar altogether. You're going to forget the new moons or not know how to keep up with the new moons. Or like we was referring to that other guy on that channel, don't even bother to go look at the moon. Just assume that the Jewish community got it right and just start telling everybody to keep their feast day on the wrong day. But it even goes on, you know, they're going to start eating blood. You know, we do that because we don't know how to purify our meat correctly. This book goes into detail on, you know, how important it is to make sure we don't eat blood. But we've gotten away from the reckoning of the calendar. And so this is why, you know, people... Don't bother to get all of the blood out of their meat and then eating all kinds of flesh. These days of remembrance are extremely, extremely, extremely important. This is how the sacred calendar works. So, again, you know, I don't mention this clock very often. Guys, I do have it for sale if you guys want to want to buy it. And if you can't afford one, you know, let me know. I actually do try to give away at least one out of ten. You know, we gave away a lot of them. And, you know, because I believe the important thing is, is that we, you know, get one. But I believe our father really is holding us up on these clocks because he wants this faceplate um, updated. I believe that's been the hold up on it is I think for some reason he doesn't like um, the information that's on this faceplate, particularly how we got the Gregorian dates on here. So we're going to be updating those. You can go ahead and place your order now. You can get one of this type if you want, but we're going to change the uh, website there, coachingthefight.shop, putting the updated version on there. If you want to wait on that, you can go ahead and place your order for it. And it just will be a little bit longer as we get this faceplate updated. And again, if you have one of these already, um, you can be able to yeah, get an update for the faceplate on it but anyway y'all make sure y'all go out to try to see the new moon this evening make sure you report back so we'll know if this particular monthly calendar is accurate else we may have to update it again i should write the word tentative across here just so you know that you know the moon hasn't been sighted yet so it's not ready to go but anyway, if you got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. And shalom.